Despite a lot of great work that's been done over the years, there are disparities in health that still exist and are causing um, undue suffering and, and problems for minorities and other underserved groups. It's really important to learn about disparities, document them, try to understand the fundamental causes. Most importantly is addressing them. And that's one of the things that we do here at the Center for Health Promotion. We take that information and we develop multi-level interventions to focus on helping the individual change their behavior, helping the community be more um, health promoting, and changing the environment in which those individuals live so that we can have better health outcomes. We don't just sit in our offices and think up interventions. We really work with the community on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's only with this kind of partnership, I think, that we could have lasting impact. Over 12 years ago, we developed a, a network of communities, academic um, partners, and primary care partners to work on cancer control efforts, and, and with the goal of accelerating the use of evidence-based cancer control in communities. My name is Ruth Aria, and I am the research coordinator for the CEPRIT 211 program. Since 2009, we've been in a collaboration with the University of Texas and the Center for Health Promotion. And it's sort of a unique partnership in that it's blending an academic approach with a community service. And so 211 is able to use evidence-based practice on real call situations. They call like normal to get assistance for services, for example, to pay utility bills or something. And at the end of the call, when they have been assisted by the INR specialist, they are asked to do a survey with some questions about their health. And based on that, we can assess their risks for certain types of cancers. They are then provided with a navigator that will assist them through the phone to obtain the services they need. What we try to do is educate the client about the different cancers and uh, the particular screenings that are available to them. And we encourage and try to empower them so that they can be more proactive about their health and we help set goals with them. At the very end when we have helped them go through the screenings and you know some of them have found out that they actually have cancer and um, they call and they're just so thankful that you were able to help them with that information and it just makes you feel really good about, you know, you know, so be it, we were able to help this client with their resources. Not only are they provided the screenings themselves, they're also um, given the knowledge about these screenings and how to prepare for them so that they can help themselves in the future and also friends, relatives, anyone else. So I think it does have a, a wide reach. Many of the research projects that we have here at the center are school-based, and schools are just a great environment to you know, really reach children and adolescents and their families. Sunnyside, Houston, Texas is one of the oldest African-American communities in the Houston area. Sunnyside has a very high teen birth rate. The We Can Do More initiative is to prevent teen pregnancy. We know that we need to do more than just focus on teen pregnancy. We need to focus on education in the community. And so with um, funding from a local foundation, we were able to facilitate a school-based health center in a high school. We're actually educating on sex, love, and healthy relationships, and contraception as well. More students are coming in asking about contraceptives along with the parents and to have it readily available for students if they need it. We've seen the teen pregnancy rate itself decline in the school and so that is a huge success for us and what we're doing. In the past five years alone we've had 170 research projects that have impacted healthier lives, healthier communities, locally, nationally and internationally. We like to say that we're outsmarting disease. We are ready and able to apply technology to reach our full potential. Some of the ways that we use technology is to make learning fun and also to make it easy for people who may not necessarily be able to read or have some limitations in health literacy. And so we have programs, for example, that help parents understand the importance of vaccinating their children against HPV. And we also have programs that work with kids that have asthma, um, on epilepsy, and on sexual health.
Ditch Your Game is a hybrid program and the program is designed to delay the initiation of sex amongst middle school students. So we designed a curriculum that was a little bit more modern. Life is a game. There must be rules. Keeping it real is just being yourself. And after a two-year period, the program was shown to be effective in delaying initiation. We see tangible results, we see uh, communities' lives changing uh, with the work that we're doing. Some of the projects that I've been involved with personally, we've developed interventions here in Houston that then have been used across the country. So when you see that kind of impact, when you see your programs being used on a really wide scale, impacting other communities, that's a really re rewarding feeling. As a student, you get the opportunity to kind of apply the things that you learn in the classroom into an actual, specific, real-world setting. So um, you get to see kind of like these abstract theoretical concepts actually play out. The vision is impact, having the greatest impact on health and quality of life that we can.